hallucinogen um, or even, you know, um, talks and discussions in your environment surrounding uh, the legality of these things, of these drugs, or even, you know, talks about experimenting, okay? So I, I definitely feel something is coming in as a temptation, and it's almost like it, it's, it's physically handed to you on a silver platter, and it's easily accessible. So that's the first thing. The other thing I'm feeling is I feel like somebody is trying to appeal to you through their through the food okay through their cooking through dining you um you know providing a very very nice like um indulgent sensory experience for you in order to capture your heart so i feel like somebody is doing this to you and either way i feel like you know for those who are single i i do sense there will be a lot of temptations in your environment and a lot of people just um you know, coming in with their hands outstretched to you, like giving you things, uh, showing appreciation, wanting to kind of seduce you or wanting to uh, offer you things. OK, so I, I do see that energy, which is really, really pleasant. Um, so overall, it seems like it's a very pleasant type of environment. And I especially see somebody trying to seduce you or trying to feed you, trying to uh, seduce you with their cooking. OK. Um, the other image that I saw was, uh, I see this man, he's got tattoos, he's got a leather vest, and he's on a, uh, a bike, okay? And he's just on a desert road, you know, riding his bike, um, pretty fast speed, I would say like 70, 80 uh, miles per hour. And he's just minding his own business, and you know, it's a warm day, but he just really likes the wind in his hair and in his face, and he has a bandana on his head. And then, so he's minding his own business, and then... These two women pull up right next to him, going around the same speed. Going, um, they're in a convertible. So one woman's driving, the other woman is like making, you know, glances at him and like throwing kisses at him. And then he, he's amused. So he kind of smiles and, you know, kind of nod his head like as a hello. And then he looks straight ahead, minding his own business. And the scene cuts out. So I definitely see a lot of elements of um, temptation coming in, seduction, as well as people really wanting your attention, okay? Um, so I feel like, you know, um, you're on the straight and narrow. So I don't, I don't feel like, you know, you're in a position where you're deviating from your relationship if you're in a relationship but I definitely feel like you know there's just a lot of attention um, pouring and, and just you know just uh, really heavily focus on you uh, a lot of positive attention a lot of suitors a lot of uh, attraction a lot of uh, people wanting to be in your presence wanting to please you wanting a piece of you okay like literally I, I just feel like everything is just dripping with colors and honey and it, it, it seems almost like entrapment and it seems like there's a lot of temptation okay so that's what I'm, I'm feeling first of all um, let me while I'm getting out the rest of the cards let me talk about the two cards on the table so we have here an air sign, King of Swords, okay? This is an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. We have as well the Eight of Swords. This is a person that I feel you don't really know what to do about the situation with them. For some of you, this is, um, for some of you who are watching, uh, this is somebody that has a lot of plans, okay? They're, they're what I call like the tactician, okay? They come up with game plans. They come up with battle plans. They come up with strategies. And um, failure for them is really not an option. And they're so sharp and so intelligent that once they set their mind and decide on a specific course of action, they're relentless. So that means, you know, everything is well thought out from beginning to end. Failure is really not an option. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody like that. This who's very, very, you know, singular, straight, lace. And uh, once they have their minds um, made up on a specific course of action, on a specific opinion about something, they don't really eat, deviate. So this is somebody who could be quite uh, stubborn. Um, they're feeling a little bit stuck in their rut and they're feeling a little bit unhappy. That's what I'm sensing. Like they're, they're like, ah, oh, you know, in this state, eight of swords, like feeling a little bit stuck, feeling like they're not really living up to their potential and feeling 
this is what I call like a desert area. Nothing is really growing on this patch of uh, soil. On top of that, there are these swords that make the situation very restrictive to stay in. So this is not somebody that can um, that 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 works comfortably in a place where there is a lot of routine, a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of um, uh, expectations. Okay, I feel like they are a little bit more free flowing, and I feel like they they do want to explore a little bit. Um, they might be thinking heavily about exploring foreign territories, okay? So this is like the traditional travel card, moving around the world. And I also feel like there might have been a lot of cultural and religious factors affecting the interaction between the two of you. There might also be a lot of religious, cultural, uh, family factors affecting... It's, um, I'm also seeing like it, it's somebody that is very, very independent. And they have a lot of, um, they might have a lot of family issues that they need to, it, it's almost like a chip on their shoulders. They try to run away from it, but it always pulls them back, okay? And then likewise, they try to run away from you, but you always pull them back. Or you try to run away from them, but circumstances, um, it's almost like this, you know, uh, really strong karmic connection that always pulls the two of you back together. Okay, what I have here is the Hierophant, and this is the institution of family, social expectations, family expectation, cultural, religious factors too. These are the big things that we often think about when we think, you know, like marriage. Okay, so I feel like this is somebody that is really trying to get out from under all of these expectations, um, and they're so independent that they get nervous and they get very. Um, they, they get very anxious when responsibilities, uh, when they have to take care of responsibilities, when they have to take care of other people. They're not particularly like a nurturing type of person. And Cancer, you guys are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly nurturing. You guys are just amazingly, um, you know how to soothe people. You know the right things to say. You anticipate what people need before they even know themselves you anticipate even before they open their mouths and you're just gifted with you know the ability to heal people um, emotionally or even physically okay a lot of you uh, would really benefit from you know being uh, working in a professional like um, uh, some type of a medical setting because you have an intuitive sense like an empathic sense of how to heal people how to soothe away somebody's worries or somebody's distress. And I feel like, you know, uh, a lot of the times you guys want to step in and, you know, solve problems for other people. Like that that's just the way you're made. That's just the way you're built. And I feel like it's really hard dealing with somebody like this. They might not even be an air sign. Um, they're very independent. Like they're so independent that... You feel like they don't need you, okay? Like they, they can take care of things on their own and they don't even oftentimes verbalize things when they're in a funk, when, they're, they're, when they need help, when they need some type of uh, advice, when they need guidance, when they need somebody to help them. They, they just don't really know how to ask for help. And so on the surface, it seems like they're just, you know, really straight laced, knows how to take care of themselves, totally independent. Um, incredibly self-sufficient, but I feel like they're going through some rough times right now where they don't know what course of action to take. They're mentally confused. They just want to run away from their emotions. And I feel like it's sort of your karmic destiny to kind of be there, pry them open, get them to, you know, let their defenses down and, you know, just see what's going on with them okay so i feel like this is an energy of another person coming into the picture for you they're not going to come with you know hands outstretch or maybe they 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 come in offering little pieces of mints but what they really want to do is you know um offer a lot more of themselves or even share a lot more of themselves and i feel like they might not even know how to approach you okay so this is the energy of the person that I feel that you're dealing with. For others of you, um, there is a very, very strong, solid relationship here where things work out really, really well. 
um, I feel like children being added to a relationship, okay? So we have here the Ten of Coins. This is the, the family card, generational wealth, uh, coming together. It's linked up here with the Hierophant. So this is like taking the relationship to the next level, feeling very ecstatic, um, overcoming financial burdens, as well as a very, very stable, solid relationship where two people really depend on each other, okay? So for those who are, you know, getting hit on left and right by people in your environment, I feel like you're, you know, on the straight and narrow. You've got a partner that, you know, they might not be 100% expressive emotionally, but you know that you, you have a great degree of trust in them, and so you're not really entertaining other options because of it. And then for others of you, who have a lot of suitors, you're definitely in the frame of mind where I feel you might be kind of like this, mainly because you're looking for commitment and stability. You're not looking for, you know, somebody that you're just going to see on the freeway, you do your five minute um, session of heavy, heavy flirtation, and for all you know, they could live in a different city, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to work out the logistics of that long distance relationship. Some of you as well could be in a long distance relationship and the partner might be coming, um, like plans are being made to facilitate a long distance relationship from moving closer to you, you to them, them to you. Likewise, I feel like more them coming to you and to allow the family unit to build on a more solid ground, okay? So I feel like you, you definitely have somebody heavily on your mind and they're so they're so dear to you they're such like an apple of your eye that you don't really deviate you don't stray and despite whoever is coming in your vicinity you don't really it's like they they don't detract you from your one true love for those in relationships for those who are not in relationships this is sort of like you know the kid at the candy store, okay, seven of cups. This is sort of like walking into a candy shop with like a wad of uh, a wad of cash in your hands, and no holds bar, so you can get whatever you want. Um, suitors galore, okay. And I feel like there's a lot of people that will be coming in your vicinity. And then I also feel for some of you, you're dealing with um, one person in particular that really, 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 um, they could be a little bit possessive of you. It could be a partner you're in a relationship, or they could be possessive of you in some way where you might want to date other people, but you don't want to let them down. You have to let them down gently, but you're kind of avoiding, you're, you don't really know what to do with the situation. And so you're talking to other people, but you're kind of keeping it hush-hush. So here's the thing, Cancers, and this is something that I've noticed a lot with you guys. You're really, you guys are just um, very kind, okay? You're really, really nice. You and Pisces. Scorpios are nice too. Scorpios, I love Scorpios. But this is more about you and Pisces because your energy are very similar. Um, a lot of the times, you don't know how to reject somebody, okay? You don't, you, you don't want to hurt anybody. You don't want to be mean to anybody. And especially if uh, you know somebody likes you and you have like such keen intuition, you know when somebody likes you. Pisces know when somebody likes them. Cancers are a little bit more, I feel like, you know, forgive me for saying, but you, you are a little bit more insecure. So you don't really believe until somebody tells you, you know, I'm in love with you. I've been admiring you for years. You know, I, I, I dream about you. I'm madly in love with you. Like, un unless they say that or unless they, you know, express it as much, you always have this doubt in the back of your mind. Do they really like me? How much do they really like me? But I feel like because of that, you're never very straightforward when it comes to your communication. Um, in particular, when it comes to turning down somebody. And it's really important that you not waste people's time and, you know, be very direct and frank when it comes to your communication, your expectations. If you're not feeling somebody, you have to be straightforward and you have to let them down. So I, I feel like 
there's somebody here that is a little bit possessive of you. They, they really like you. They're a little bit more on the jealous end, okay? They've got a little bit of a jealous streak. They're a little bit possessive. Um, and I'm feeling like you have a lot of suitors. People think you're available or people think you're single or people think you're interested. If you are not interested, by all means, let's not beat around the bush and let's not waste your time. Let's not waste the other person's time. But more so, it's just the way that we need to behave with one another in order to be fruitful with communication and in order to, you know, it's like a courtesy that we owe one another, okay? If you're not interested in somebody and they're coming on really strongly, you want to let them down so that they don't get any idea, so that they don't waste more time, so that they're not being led on. And I feel like for many of you, it's, um, it's really important that you do that, okay? Scorpios are amazing at doing that. Okay, like if they're not feeling somebody, they'll let them know. They'll give them, you know, um, they'll never give them the time of day. They they will ghost them and then they will even um, be very, very blunt and, and say so. And I feel like with Pisces, you know, um, they always know. They Pisces know when someone likes them. They kind of uh, don't, they, they, they think it's harmless to kind of lead the other person on because they like the attention too, and who wouldn't like the attention, right? So it's not just a Piscean thing, but like they like the attention, but I feel for you guys, you feel bad turning down the other person. You feel bad. But then a big part of you is not 100% sure. Do they really like me? If I turn them down and they don't like me, um, it would be embarrassing. So I feel like you don't tell people for those wrong reasons. And so what I feel is necessary is, you know, when we have a relationship, and especially for those of you in relationships, if there is a relationship and you feel like you need to preserve the sanctity of that relationship, you need to make sure that the people outside of it is aware that you're in a relationship. So this is more about, you know, being mature and telling, letting people know, oh, I'm, I'm married, I'm not available, I'm not available for dating, I'm not available for, you know, one night stand, I'm not available for um, stepping outside of my relationship, I'm just not available. And then if you're single and you're not feeling somebody, you need to also, you know, friend zone them, you need to distance yourself and you need to make it very, very clear so that they get the message, okay? So that they don't waste their time because I feel like there's a lot of time, energy leakage and wastage here where you have a lot of suitors and it's a wonderful thing. But if you're not feeling them, don't don't bother, okay? Don't give it the time, don't give it the energy and especially don't give the other person false hopes. So I feel like you're in a position where singles, you're like a kid in a candy store. You have options that are available for you. Some of you might be dealing with another water sign. So I have um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, uh, particularly um, Cancer, I'm sorry, uh, Piscean energy came out really strongly. We have here the Queen of Cups and the Two Fish. So I'm feeling here somebody is really, really, really interested in you. You, vice versa, could be incredibly, incredibly interested in them. I see others of you are in a relationship, though, um, if you're in a relationship, I have air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And that's like a long-standing relationship where it's like a power couple dynamics, where things are very, very stable, where financially you both are like much better off than you would have been on your own. Okay. So I feel like this is really um, all about, you know, setting your intentions and especially um, creating more of the social environment that you're after, okay? Meeting people that really nurture your soul. Meeting people who are very much kindred spirits to you. So Ten of Cups. Finding somebody who's like us. Finding somebody where we don't feel like we have to over-explain ourselves. Finding a community of people that just gets us. So you, you might not even, you know, have known them for very long. But when you talk to them, there's like commonalities. There's like a common thread of something running through both of your lives. And as a result, you feel like you've known this person for years, okay? So I feel like many of you are in a position where you're heavily, heavily socializing. You're putting yourself out there. You're interacting and meeting with a lot of people. 
I'm sensing as well for some of you, this could be um, in an academic environment where you might have, you know, the same interests, the same hobbies, the same um, career path, aspirations. You're learning the same things. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of teamwork associated with this. And as a result, you're meeting people who are on your same page, who are passionate about the same things that you are. Okay. So a lot of attraction here. And I also feel attraction in the workplace where projects are getting done. And then everyone has like a celebratory type of a um, finality to a situation, like a hard won victory or some type of a major, major project that's now finally being pushed through and you're seeing it through completion. Okay, so I feel like there is a lot of financial blessings, emotional blessings coming through, more friendships, more, just a lot more um it's like joining a community of people. That's what I'm feeling, okay? Um, I'm also seeing as well, you're a little bit worn out. So I feel like mentally, you might have um, had to do a lot of like mental exertion, okay? When we start out here with King of Swords, this deals with the mental realm and the realm of communication and the realm of writing. So it's, it's almost like, you know, academic writing or doing a lot of uh, difficult problem solving where not only do you have to you know not you it's like you have to make a decision not only do you make the decision you have to write about how to justify that decision because i feel like you know whatever you do or whatever you write it's being submitted to somebody higher up and they peruse or they read through your explanations and they have to be okay with it. They, It has to convince them in order for them to move it forward. So some of you might have a business proposal. You're trying to get a financier and it has to pass that common sense test before the money will trickle in, before they will allow you a uh, an allocated funds. For others of you, your work products are being observed by like another entity, another person. And I feel like they're really, really reading to make sure that they're, they're reading or they're, they're like asking you a lot of questions and they're trying to make sure that your argument is cogent and your argument is like foolproof. So many of you might be in a position where you're doing like a master's thesis defense, a PhD defense, or you know, even like um, a senior thesis defense, you're kind of like um, up there, okay? And everyone is asking you questions and you have to defend yourself. So it can feel a little bit intimidating but you're going to be able to sail away from this successfully. Some of you could be going through as well um, tests where there's a panel and then they ask questions like debates, mock debate, mock exam, moot court even. So I'm seeing like, you know, a lot of people in the academic realm and they're being uh, heavily tested by higher ups. It's going to yield a very, very good result but you definitely need to be a little bit more organized with your thinking, okay? Um, I'm seeing throwing out there, like, um, don't appeal in an emotional way. Don't make an emotional argument. Make a rational argument, okay? So don't make an emotional argument. Make a rational argument. That's going to go a lot further, which makes sense. Um, and so that, that's what I'm, I'm getting here. And then I'm also getting as well, um, you know, the whole image, kid in the candy store. Um, I feel for many of you too, you know, educational attainment is going to get you really, really far in life, okay? You're kind of like at the end phase of it, okay? You're going to be sailing over your financial worries. You're going to have like um, the degree under your belt. You're going to have like that theoretical experience, okay? And then you're going to be able to gradually get out there and uh, put theory into practice and then apply uh, everything that you've learned. You're getting a little bit impatient. You're getting a little bit of ahead of yourself. And you're also wondering, like, you know, when are things going to happen for me professionally? And what I'm seeing here is it's going to happen in due time. Right now, you just need to really, really focus and not project so far into the future. Own hangups that they're not able to express themselves. For some of you, you might be dealing with an earth sign that's already in another relationship. And I feel like this is not news to you if that's the case. You might already know. And, and because of that, they're not able to give themselves. And then as a result of it, I feel like you're drifting away 
you're thinking about them heavily you're you're still drifting away finding new people to be with and i feel like they're going to be coming around and then for others of you air sign a little bit confused a little bit like stuck in their their own mental space and not really sure what they want to do and really optimistic together and both it's like a very be beautiful start to something okay so you have some really good things coming into the picture for the latter part of uh, March and uh, just take it easy okay um, I would say you know lots of success as well coming into the picture for you and overcoming financial worries which is something